G'day, how are ya? My name's Kyle. Uh, today I wanted to show you how I've got my referencing set up in Ableton so that it's really easy for me to go between one track and the other. And I also wanted to just show you kind of what I look for when I'm referencing. Uh, so let's start off. Open Ableton. Uh, I've got two audio tracks down the bottom here. Um, and they're off at the moment. These are just songs that kind of sound similar to <clears throat> what I make, or what I want to make. And then my track. So yeah, um, what I usually do is we'll drag the track in. I'll turn it down six decibels here so that it's like minus six. Um, because that's just what I gain stage the rest of my track to, which is minus six. Oh. And make sure warp is turned off for both of these tracks, because if you have warp turned on, it will ch essentially change how the track was intended to sound after it left mastering. And we want to keep the loudness as close to how it was when it left mastering. So just turn warp off when you're referencing, at least that's what I do. Um, essentially to set up the functionality between of going like straight from your track to the other reference track you just press this little key button up here and then click on the solo button for the reference track and then press S on your keyboard and that will create a shortcut that turns the solo on off on you get it? it's just turning this on when I press S now on the keyboard and I do the same thing for the other track, but I'll bind it to D. So now SD, and then back to mine, and back to my track. You get it? Okay, cool. So once you've got that, you want to head over to the master. Um, I've just got this EQ8 here, which has uh, two separate filters like this, so I can kind of go between the frequency ranges that I want to listen to, and I find that often, well, I don't know if it's just me, but it's easier for me to compare different frequency bands and then listen to it as a whole. I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. But <clears throat> this is the other key binder I have set up. Press key again, and click on this little off button for the filter and then bind that to shift S, which is capital S. Now that button just turns this filter on and off, which is so easy for referencing. Let's you bounce between the tracks and listen to what like the different sections of each of them sounds like. Okay, so that's cool. Now we can swap between the tracks and activate this filter but like what do we do with that well I don't really know what the fuck to do either <laughs> I kind of just like started doing something I got this plugin called Smexoscope which is basically just a visualizer for the audio and I've got Ulean as well and I'll just show you my setting these are both free plugins too that you can get I would say get them and make sure they're after this EQ on the master so if I just press play, turn my EQ off, you can see that it gives you like, if you just let it play out, it'll give you a loudness estimation, minus 15, around that's what mine is at the moment. If I swap to a reference track, it just lets you essentially see so this one's minus 14 at the moment and this is what the audio looks like over here well, I suppose you get two separate visualizations for the audio when you run these two plugins essentially when I I'll actually only well I do this throughout most of like when I'm making the song just to see how everything sounds but when you're just starting off you can just like once you've volume staged everything to how you think it should sound, then I would say at the end of mixing, just come in here and do this hard referencing. And what, what you do is you 
essentially just keep going back to the drop of your song. And I would just like, go to this, go to the filter and set it to just be the sub frequencies. And now you can see what just the sub looks like on your track and the reference tracks just by bouncing between them using S and D. And it gives you these values over here, minus 15. So you can see that the sub for my track is sitting around minus 15. And that's what it looks like over here on this Mexiscope. This skill oscillator. <laughs> anyway, if I go to the mid range frequencies, I would, it's probably better for this video because you can't really hear sub frequencies unless you have like a studio set up. So this is what it looks like. This is my song. This is just the mid range frequencies. So what you can do is you can see this sitting around 20 bluffs and this is what the waveforms look like. So I would just go back and forth and compare the mid range from my track to the mid range from the other tracks. And you can see just by changing here, there's not much of a jump in how much of it looks to be honest. But if you want to simplify, I would just stop and then press play. That's mine, let it play out for a little bit. <clears throat> you can see it's sitting around 20 for the mid-range. Play the other song, sitting around 20. And then play the other reference. This one's sitting at about 18, 19, 19-ish, 19 20-ish again. But cool, my song pretty much sounds like that. <clears throat> like the reference tracks, it's going to 20 luffs. Sweet. Um, and then the next thing, I would just move this EQ again up to the high band with the high frequencies, which is like around here in EQ8 above like 1K. You can just listen to that. And I like to just watch the transients. You can see it's kind of hard when you first start out, like actually trying to correlate what you're seeing to the sound that you hear, but you can see these big ones, the hi-hats. And if I swap to the other reference track, you can see it has <coughs> pronounced hi-hats, but not as pronounced. It's just <coughs> more of a just to make sure nothing is like severely lacking in any one area. So yeah, I would just keep going back and forth between these and you can see the average loudness for this is about 23 lofts. Go to the reference track, sitting at around 23, 24 lofts for the hi-hats, for the high frequencies. Yeah. And then you can do that again for the bass. This is the reference track. The bass for this is sitting at around 17 loves. Bass for my track, sitting around 16, 15. Other reference track, sitting at around 16. Oh yeah, it's, it's more of a light thing, like a light guide, but <clears throat> yeah, I don't know, this is just how I reference essentially. And like the more time you spend looking at this, the more you'll actually be able to see, oh, that's like the transient of a kick, that's the transient of a clap, that's where it should sit in relation to the other sounds. A good way for to me to describe this would be maybe looking between uh, 100 to 200 hertz on this EQ down here. Now if I press play, you can see pretty clearly that's the kick and this other like waveform is the bass. That's a reference track and if I go to the other reference track, well this is my track now, 
it's kind of got like the bass is this, this is the kick. And they kind of got the same, it's called dynamic range and you can see that presented over here. It's called loudness range in new lean, but basically it's just how, how loud is the bass compared to the kick. And that is what you really need to pay attention to. How loud does everything sound in relation to each other? Um, yeah, I would just essentially go through each band of this and um, let's say <clears throat> maybe the bass is like not loud enough, I want it louder, I'll go turn up the bass and then see what it does here. It's just so much easier when you're working with these isolated frequency bands to Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.